Now that we have our page layout set up, we need to start adding content to our web page. I'm in an expanded mode. I'm going to reset it. But at the bottom here, we have the common library and the document library. We're going to start with the common library. And these have a lot of different objects that we can use. Typically, I'll start with the HTML objects. And it has most of what I'm going to need for this design. So for this design, I'm going to put a search box in the top right hand corner. And so I want to use a text field, which I will drag up here. This is where they would enter for their search. And I can use my arrow keys to move it around a little bit if I'm not completely happy with where I placed it. And then I'm going to want a button. And the main difference between the Windows button and the Mac button is the Mac button is rounded. It's not representative of the final design. It's just where it's at right now. My zoom level is currently it's going to make it 66%, but I do want where I can see what the label says. So in the symbol properties, I will change my font size. And this is not representative of what it's really going to look like. It's just representative of, I want you to be able to read that it's a search box. So I will set the label to be search. Again, the, pro the point of a wireframe is to have it set up to show you where things will be. We aren't using colors. We aren't. It just says this just shows that there will be a button there. It may or may not have rounded edges. We'd pick that later. Now, I would typically also add text of what the website is for the masthead. This will really end up on a photo in the background, but we're going to call it. Let's go into our text properties down here. I want to put this at about a font of 50. I'm just going to leave it black because again we want this to be black and white and my site is going to be travels with Seamus. I will probably actually integrate this text into a masthead. Let me choose a different tool, my pointer tool. Make this text box wider and we'll have that about here. Now we'll have an image behind this. I'm not sure if I'm going to go the whole way or have it in the corner. There isn't an image option here, so I'm going to create my own symbol for that. And that's usually done using a rectangle. I've got it set to transparent. I want, no I don't, I want this to be transparent. I want my line color to be black, and I want my line to be two pixels wide. And I'm going to draw a rectangle here, and then I'm going to draw an X in it. And the box with an X in it is what's traditionally used to represent where an image would go on a web page. And since I'm going to want to reuse this symbol, I'm going to select the whole thing. And I could hit F8 or Command Let's see, modify symbol, convert to symbol. I want to save this in my library. This is going to represent an image. So I want to save it to my common library. And then like my HTML symbols, we'll go ahead and name that image. It will appear here in the custom symbols, image. I can use this one I just brought in and I'm going to resize it using my scale tool. So I'm going to represent that I will have an image here. I haven't decided if I'm going to leave that as an image there or a complete image in the background, but I don't really have to decide that at this point. I would also want an image, and now that it's in the page, I should switch to my document library because I'm using another copy of the same one. So I'd also have an image probably, let's say an image here and an image here, and then I'll add some text blocks in there. Now on this side, I'm going to want to use a link. 
and in my common library under the HTML options I do have a link and then I can put that in here again I want to make it readable I can't read that so I'm going to my symbol properties and this doesn't really tell me what my final site's going to size is going to be it's going to, but I'm going to make it an 18 if I wanted to make this a prototype I could actually enable the link to work and put a real link here if it was going to another page um, that's fine I want my text Let me click off that for a second I want my text to actually say what the links are going to be so I'll have England and then let's align that a little different I'm going to use my pointer tool and I'm going to move this there and I can use my alt key hit the arrow once that makes a copy of it alt arrow alt arrow and that saves me the trouble of reformatting and dragging in more links alt arrow I'm going to have at least five pages and I want to represent what the links are actually going to be so I would have England I would have Ireland I would have United States I would have Canada and I will have travel tips now there's different ways we could arrange these I'm just gonna leave it that way for now I'll either arrange them by closer to where I live to farther away which would put the US on top and England and Ireland or I would possibly subgroup them into Europe the Americas but this gives us a discussion point to start with usually when you're creating a wireframe for a customer you'll actually create three or four of them to give them something to choose from now the other thing that will typically mock up is text and for me I just re represent text using some black lines let's go into the properties I usually like to make my lines five pixels wide and so I'll draw a line here alt and there I've got a bunch of them let me use my arrow tool so I can select them better there's my pointer tool Now typically what I like to do here is to select my line and look at the X point where they start. Well, I'm going to want them all to start on the same point, 300. I'm going to set the first Y to 460. And I actually want to make this one a little bit longer. I like to have an irregular right side for the text so it looks more like text. So I'll make that 260 click on the next one it should also start at 300 we'll space it evenly at 480 it's okay for the width this should start at 300 the Y location should be 500 We'll make this a little longer. Again, start at 300. Put this one in at 520. I'm going evenly 20 pixels apart, and that's okay for it to be shorter. Three hundred. 
540. Let's make this one. One hundred. And I'm just going to delete this one. Okay, so this gives me representative paragraph text. Now that would be a pain to do for every line on the screen. So what I'm going to just do is make that a symbol of its own. Select everything, modify, symbol, convert to symbol. And I will call it text. And I will save it to my common library because I'm definitely going to use that again. And save it there. Now the cool thing is that now that I have it saved here, I can make the whole thing wider. And I can copy it, Alt key arrow. And I can do multiple paragraphs of text because we don't really want to get sidetracked with what the text actually stay, says, we just want to represent that some text is going to go here. So I use my Alt key and my arrow every time I want to duplicate it. And I would typically put in a heading 1 up at the top to indicate that this is primary content and describe it. And I might have a heading 2 over here if it's subcontent. And then I might also have a text box down here in my footer area. with copyright information, things like that. I could add links down there, but in any case, this mocks up what's going to go where. And that's the whole point to a wireframe, is to show what's going to go where. And typically, you do two or three of these, up to five, to give different possible layouts to a customer, and you get them to sign off on this step before you go on to the next one. Because the first step is planning where things are going to go. And then you can get into colors and images. So this is what a wireframe should look like. It shows you what's going to go where, and with the exception of the links, which can be blue, it should be black and white, shades of gray.